So forget sleep hygiene, warm baths, kiwi fruits, supplements, nostril breathing, all these really reactionary things that you're doing to try to force yourself to sleep and listen to this video where you're going to learn the gold standard treatment which gets to the root cause of insomnia. So I'm going to be teaching you how and why it works but before I do that I need to break down exactly what the root cause of insomnia is and I would say insomnia is caused by four main things. It's the brain taking on a new pattern of sleep, it's a sleep drive problem, it's the fight or flight stress response, and it's the conditioned response of the bed being a place of worry and wakefulness. So in terms of the brain taking on a new pattern of sleep, number one, uh, people that go on solo round the world boat trips, they can't sleep in that consolidated eight hours block because if they did, the boat's going to sink. So what they do is they set an alarm every single 15 minutes to wake themselves up. Very quickly, because the body clock is so incredibly trainable and so incredibly smart, within about a week or so, they will start waking up every single 15 minutes without the alarm even needing to sound which is great when they're on the boat not so great when they return to land and they're still waking up every single 15 minutes and i actually saw a client who was one of these round the world boat trippers and they had learned that as a pattern of sleep and I needed to help them to break it. So it doesn't matter what pattern of sleep you've taught your brain, it might be taking ages to fall asleep, it might be waking up multiple times during the night, it might be waking up early in the morning. If you've inadvertently taught your brain a pattern of sleep which isn't helpful to you, the brain's going to run with it and carry on with it. So that's the pattern of sleep. Number two is a sleep drive problem. I talk about sleep drive loads in my other videos, um, so do take a look at them. But very briefly, the only thing that makes you sleep is your sleep drive, and the only thing that builds your sleep drive is wakefulness. So simply put, the longer you're awake for, the stronger that drive to sleep will be. Now, people with insomnia never get that drive to sleep. They never feel sleepy. There's a couple of reasons behind that, but one of the reasons brings me on to the next point, which is the fight or flight response. So if you imagine a good sleeper, someone who doesn't have any anxiety, stress or worry around their sleep, who's got a strong regulated sleep drive going on a camping trip to a national park. Just as they're about to drift off, they hear the howl of a wolf next to their tent. So their heart rate body temperature, adrenaline, cortisol, it spikes through the roof because there is something big and bitey which is incredibly threatening to their safety. So when you've got insomnia, it's like you've got a wolf in the bedroom all the time. So if you ever noticed you've got a racing heart at night, if you ever noticed you can feel incredibly hot, if you've just so anxious, so stressed, that's that fight or flight response at play. That's the wolf in your bedroom. And that's something we need to tackle with CBTI. The fourth point kind of ties into the fight or flight response, which is the conditioned response of the bed being a place of worry and wakefulness. Um, so it doesn't matter how comfy your bed is, you can have the perfect pillows, the comfiest mattress, blackout blind, it can be completely quiet, but it's a horrible place to be in that you cannot sleep in. And that's because there's so much evidence in the past that every time you lay down to sleep, you don't sleep, you just lie there and get anxious, you get stressed, you get annoyed. And every time you're doing that, you're teaching the brain that the bed is a place of stress, it's a place of rumination, it's a place of anxiety, it's a place of worry. So if you've ever noticed you can be calm and happy while sat on the sofa and then instantly alert when your head hits the pillow, that's the conditioned response of the bed being a place of worry and wakefulness at play. So probably the two most um, well-known techniques used in CBTI are bedtime restriction and stimulus control. 
to break them down what they are. Uh, so bedtime restriction. So if you imagine a nine inch pastry dish, but you've only got six inches worth of pastry, you roll that six inches worth of pastry onto that nine inch dish, you're gonna get holes in the middle. It's not gonna reach the end. It's not gonna begin at the start. So if you're spending nine hours in bed, but you're only, for example, sleeping for six hours, you're gonna get wakefulness during the night. You're gonna wake up early in the morning. It's gonna take you ages to fall asleep because the brain only wants to give you six hours of sleep and but you're lying in bed for nine hours. So by reducing the amount of time in bed, you're not reducing the amount of sleep you're getting, you're just removing all that wakefulness from the nighttime, you're building your sleep quality, you're building that drive to sleep, you're teaching the brain that there's nothing wrong with you or, or your ability to sleep. And once you've got that amazing, lovely sleep quality in place, that's when you slowly, incrementally start increasing the amount of time you spend in bed. So, so effective. Ugh. I'd been spending 20 years of my life doing everything I could to force myself to sleep. Within a few days of CBTI, I was doing everything I could to stay awake and failing miserably. So that's bedtime restriction. Stimulus control, leaving the bedroom when you start feeling anxious and stressed and returning to bed when you feel sleepy again. So this is to decondition the brain that the bed is a place of anxiety, stress, worry and wakefulness and instead teach the brain that the bed is just a place for sleep. And so this should slowly, incrementally start reducing that anxious feelings that you have when you're in bed at night time. These two techniques used in isolation, they're not gonna help someone who've, who's got a huge amount of anxiety, stress, and worry around their sleep because they're just the tip of the iceberg. CBTI is an entire holistic framework taught over a number of weeks. It includes things like re-education around sleep. It's so critically fundamental to CBTI reducing the obsession, the worry, the anxiety around sleep. So people with insomnia, they have a thousand and one ritualistic things they do in order to force themselves to sleep. They have a thousand and one ritualistic things they do in order to try and protect their sleep. And all of this just causes a huge amount of obsession, worry, and desire for sleep. So helping people to, to um, stop doing these things is incredibly helpful. Teaching incredibly powerful, scientifically proven techniques to help reframe and challenge those thought patterns at a much more constructive time uh, during the daytime so people don't bring them in bed at nighttime to eliminate that race in mind at night incredibly helpful as well. That's how I approach CBTI because CBTI, it varies wildly. So we take an electrician, for example. Some electricians are absolutely fantastic. You invite them around to your house to rewire it, they rewire it, and you've got a lovely working house again. Some electricians you invite around to rewire your house, you get electrocuted as soon as you touch the uh, light switch, and they spend four hours flirting with you. It's not a true story, it's, it happened years ago, but you know, that was when I was young and beautiful. But you kind of see the analogy here. The quality, they're both electricians, but the results can vary wildly. So when I teach CBTI, I use a framework which reduces anxiety, reduces the stress around sleep. I use a framework which is incredibly kind, which is incredibly supportive. Yeah, there's no fixed standard to CBTI. So, all right, thanks very much for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed the video.